the intensity of this search for these dolls. A fully grown woman taking a doll out of a child's hand? They trampled everybody. The way in which people reacted in stores, this was new. What do we tell our little girl Christmas morning? What are we supposed to say? You've been good, but Santa ran short? This is a story about the worst parts of capitalism. The Emmy-nominated documentary Billion Dollar Babies, the true story of the Cabbage Patch Kids, takes a look at how these dolls became a pop culture juggernaut in the early 80s and how they helped usher in the era of Black Friday retail craziness at stores around the country. Director Andrew Jenks and executive producer Dan Goodman join us now. Good morning. Hey, good guys. morning. How are you? Uh, great. I was working in a, in a toy department in 1983, so I was quite in the middle oh. of this. And I would imagine the answer to this setup is not one thing. Maybe there were multiple reasons why this was the first uh, riot-worthy toy, if it indeed was. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, I, I, one of the big things was that these these dolls, and forgive me for even calling them dolls, uh, no two look the same. Uh, they had their own individual unique eyes, uh, dimples, hair color, size, face. So although millions and, millions and millions of people were getting Cabbage Patch Kids, they all were kind of getting their own. And there was a sense of, of ownership and individuality behind that. And I think that was probably one of the big reasons. So the big get that you guys got was the creator, Xavier Roberts. He hasn't done an interview in 20 years. What did what did you you had to track him down with a private investigator? What did you find out? Yeah, we did. We we did. We looked uh, we, we really tried uh, for a very long time to get him to participate. Um, but, you know, he lives in the south of France and he really just is not very public for a very long time. And he's never sat down, certainly not to this extent or this length. Um, and full credit to Andrew, who uh, was persistent and relentless in trying to find him and then convince him uh, to do it. Um, and I think you'll see from the film, it's it's one of the highlights, uh, you know, of the entire film. What, what did you learn from him that, that was unexpected? Uh, I think, you know, there's a lot of there's been a lot of controversy over whether or not Xavier Roberts was inspired by someone else named Martha Nelson Thomas um, to create the Cabbage Patch Kids or if he just straight up stole it. And so this was really the first time that uh, he was able to uh, answer those questions, re -ask them very directly. He was very upfront about his point of view. And so uh, that was the big thing was being able to hear his perspective as to these allegations that have existed for, for many years now. Now, I, obviously he made a ton of money, but he's also an yeah. artist by, by trade and nature. You yes. would think an artist, no matter how much money you have, would want to continue to create. Is, was he or has he been doing that? Or does he give a reason why he stopped? Yeah, no, he still he still creates. Um, it was a, one of the interesting things we learned is because he considers himself an artist. That's why he signed all of his creations, mm. each uh, each baby with his signature on the rear end, uh, as became so famous. Uh, he said he signed all of his pieces. And yeah, he's still very involved in the brand to this day. Babyland uh, General Hospital in Cleveland, Georgia is still around. It's an incredible place. They have cabbage births once an hour. And uh, Xavier is still very, very involved. Wow. Does he have any like regrets about um... You know that the fact that this funneled in this craziness about toys and a you know Black Friday and it was the fact. I mean, I'm sure he didn't anticipate it would become what it did. No, I wouldn't call it regrets, but I think he was surprised, right, yeah. Andrew? Yeah, definitely surprised. I mean, listen, there was a hundred. It wasn't just the doll itself. There was 150 licenses around the world at one time. They sold. 20 million Cabbage Patch Kids diapers, they had low sugar cereal, Gosh, they had yeah. ups, baby mattresses, baby mattresses, greeting cards, jeans, shoes, vitamins, pajamas. So it was like a, it was a lifestyle. It was bigger than just kind of a doll. Yeah. Plus his house in the south of, house yes. in the south of France. Yeah. <laughs> and, and boys are buying the dolls too. So that's increasing your sales. One of the first times ever a, a doll was marketed to young boys to teach them how to be young fathers. Um, there were a lot of breakthroughs with Cabbage Patch Kids, actually, from the diversity to marketing to boys. Um, there's a lot of stuff we get into about the time period and the firsts, really, that came from this product. 
um, that we explore in the film. Has anyone tried to recreate this magic somehow? And have they been success successful to any degree? Uh, they definitely have uh, tried. I mean, there was a ton of ripoffs that uh, existed for for many uh, years, and uh, still to this day, they'll they will pop up. And then there's definitely been um, you know uh, toys and dolls that have come out in the years since that definitely took on what Cabbage Patch Kids started, which was this idea of each doll being different, having individuality, their own uniqueness, that sort of thing. Interesting. Well, for probably, detail. Probably the most successful was Garbage Pail Kids. Yeah. <laughs> right. And that, that turned into a, uh, a big lawsuit, correct? It did. Yes, it did. Yeah. Well, we remember those stickers and the, the we just showed a clip of the horrible movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> horrified children. Okay. Yeah. Well, for details on how to watch Billion Dollar Babies, you can go to CabbagePatchFilm.com. Thanks so much, guys. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.